Okay, so uh, when I got to this text message that you tell lies for a living, da 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 da, I looked on social media and da 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 da, I decided, okay, let's deal with it. Okay, so I wrote this letter to the Council of State. Yeah, it's here, 8th June. Request for the attendance of members. Is it, is it written here? Okay, yes. Uh, so this is the letter. Request for the attendance of members of the Council of State. Pursuant to Section 1 and 18 of the Right to Information uh, Act 2019, Act 989 of Parliament, I write to your office to request a copy of the attendance of meetings of the Council of State from 2017 to 2022 for the purpose of ascertaining the frequency with which a member attended the council meetings. That's what, we are in a democracy. Akufado has passed the Right to Information Act. So we don't quarrel over, I attended, I didn't attend, you didn't attend, I didn't attend. We go for the information, okay? So that's what we did. And uh, we were looking for the attendance of a member. And we said, I hope this request uh, shall be granted with expediency. Yours faithfully, I signed it. Okay, so the next day, today, uh, we received this from the Council of State. It's signed by Stephen Blay, Director of Finance and Administration, for the Secretary to the Council. Uh, you can see a request for attendance to the meeting, and it reads as follows. Your letter of June 8, 2022, in respect of the above subject, refers. Please find here with attached details of members of the Council's attendance to the various meetings of the Council for the period February 2017 to December 2020, as requested. Kindly acknowledge receipts. That is from Stephen Blay. Okay, so uh, before I move to the next slide, uh, this is the attendance. This is the document of the attendance. So... Uh, the sheet I'm holding here, and, and uh, as I said, because we are dealing with an important person, we will limit the extent to which we share the evidence, but we have it. If we are called in any forum, we will show it. We have it. We definitely do have it, but we will limit the extent to which we share it. Okay. So this is uh, one page, and this, so we don't even have this on task screen. What I'm holding, we just have a little bit. I'll show you. So this, is one, this page is one meeting. There are 242 of this, and each meeting... Everyone signs. They sign you. I'll show you that, by the way. Everyone signs. And so you can tell how many times meetings were attended. Uh, the Honorable uh, was unable to attend the meetings. Just to cut it short, I have to restate for the record that he attended 16% of the meetings. He was unable to attend 80%. This is the factual record from the Council of States. So let's get that straight. We, I'm, I'm not in this job uh, for whatever people say. This, I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm not going to stand here and just talk about something from my head. I've been doing it for 20 years. And I've been, I've not just been, I've been leading. It's not, and it's not that, I didn't start journalism with Good Evening Ghana. I've been leading for 20 years, as I said, because the hand of the Lord is here. So when I come and say something and the people say it's not true, it's not true, and I don't even understand it. Okay, so now let's go to the committee meetings. In the interview granted Joe FM, the legendary Toby Affair, they said that he worked very hard at the committee level. That I'm going to show you, uh, in terms of the committee meetings, what happened. Okay, so let's move beyond that. Now, this is the committee meetings. This one I can show you. This is the committee meetings obtained from the Council of State. So there are uh, three committees. Uh, so the first line here is the plenary. That is the meetings that were held. The, the plenary, that they, held, they hold a number of meetings, number of meetings every year. Okay. The number two here is the Legal Constitutional Affairs and Petitions Committee. That's one committee of the Council of State. The next committee is the Appointment and House Affairs Committee. The third one, which the legendary Togbe Afede chaired, which he talked about in the interview and said that uh, he, the, no meeting was done without him. It's correct, no meeting was done without him. Is the Economy and Sustainable Development Initiative Committee. This is the one that Togbe Afede chaired, the ESDIC, uh, that's ESDIC, Economy and Sustainable Development. Okay, so let's look at the table. This is official record of the Council of State uh, committee meetings, not yet the plenary, committee meetings. Okay, so um, in 2017, the legal committee held eight meetings. The uh, uh, appointment committee had 12 meetings. Togbe's committee held four meetings. Okay, and it goes on like that. As I said, because he's a very important person, we won't say a lot. So that's for 2017. Now let's come to the total. So in total, in the period uh, under review, the uh, first committee, legal, held 33 meetings. Appointment committee held 52 meetings. Tobis committee held an abysmal 11 meetings. That's the fact, that's the record. That's 
a fact. So what the question? Why did his committee hold far less meetings than the rest? Let's look at the percentage. What is 11 of 52? And then we'll see the percentage of the meeting. That, and the, he, the, the, a meeting couldn't be called without him because he's chairman. This is the record. This is the record. What have we said wrong? This is the truth. It's the record. It's the truth. What, what, we, we're not just talking from our head. We have used the RTI bill that Akufado passed that we all use. Suleiman Brahma uses, I use it. I've just, this is the first time I've used it anyway. But I, I'm happy to use it again. And this is it. 11. That's the number of meetings. The other committee, the ad hoc uh, committees, held 32 meetings. Now, uh, you have to look at uh, ad hoc. You understand what ad hoc means. Ad hoc is not a, uh, in parliament, they call it um, uh, select committee and ad hoc committee. Okay. Now, ad hoc committees are just put together for issues that, okay, they just put it together. Ad hoc committees held 32 meetings. The regular committee of economy and sustainable development held 11 meetings. Let's look at the interesting uh, year of 2020, the COVID year, where COVID had occurred and everything was about finance and economics and we we're concerned about that. In the year 2020, Togbe's committee in the entire year of 12 months held one meeting, one single, in a crucial year of 2020, where the committee needed to listen to the finance gurus like Togbe himself and advise, be able to call the Minister of Finance and say, look, our committee led by Togbe is saying that you are managing the COVID wrongly. Our committee led by Togbe is saying that you shouldn't do this, you should do that, you should do that, because Togbe has the competence to be a finance minister. So the nation should feel blessed that Togbe was at the head helm of affairs at the Council of State's Committee of Finance. And, and, and so we, we have sort of two finance ministers, Ken Oferata on one hand, both of them from Yale, Togbe on the other hand. And if Togbe had held several meetings and had made an input into the council's plenary, they could have invited the finance minister. They could have subpoenaed the finance minister and said, what is going on? In that crucial year, Togbe's committee held one meeting, a bit small one. That's the truth. We didn't create it. We didn't hold a meeting. We didn't ask them not to hold a meeting. This is a matter of record. One meeting is what they held, single one in the year 2020, altogether 11 in the entire period. In the entire period, they held 11 meetings. Other committees held these meetings. This is the truth. This is from the Council of State. Any, any journalist can use the same method we use, right, to the Council of State. They, they will reply, they will give you the information. You are Joy FM, you are CTFM, you are, go to the Council of State. That's what Akufado has done for us. I will repeat it. Akufado has done it for us. And I say that because the RTI bill, it was lying in Parliament from Jomama Mills. Blah, 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 blah. It was there. Nobody passed it. Akufado passed it. Every day are talking. Ke, 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 ke. Akufado passed that bill. That's why today we can do what we do. It was Akufado. Congratulations to him. God bless him. Yeah, God bless him again. Because he passed the RTI bill that John Mahama did not pass. That Professor Mills could not pass. Akufado passed the bill. And that's how today we have this information to settle the matter. Otherwise, how am I going to Council of State and say, give me your attendance book? Ooh, they won't give you. They, they should not give me. They are a very serious state institution. But once you invoke the RTI, they are obliged to do so. That's what the law says. And that's how we got this. So one meeting in 2020, single one. one. De January, February, March, April, May, June, July. August, September, October, November, December, one meeting. I didn't say it. I respect Togbe Afedeo. I respect him. Maybe he didn't have time. He's a busy man. I'm sure he didn't have time. He could not. One meeting. That's what he attended. Okay. I'm done with the thing. I'll not say more. Uh -huh. So this is the document that I have. Okay. Uh, this document is what I've put. Only one page. I'm not going to go through all of it. But I'm telling you. If anybody wants, we have 242. All the meetings of this, it shows who attended. So this is how it is. So you see, this is an example of a meeting that the Honorable Togbe Afede could not attend. So these are the council members, names are signed. Uh, this man also didn't attend. Uh, Wu Sun Sia, IGP retired, he didn't attend this meeting. And then uh, Togbe Afede, he did not attend this meeting. This is only one meeting, by the way. But I'm saying that the truth of, is that I have the document in my hand. Uh, uh, Togbe Afede they attended only 16% of the meetings. I'm not saying there's any problem with it or that there's not a problem with it. I'm just telling you the fact because we have been called out as liars. We have been called out as saying something untrue on Tuesday. We have been called out. And in the interview, the reporter asked him, uh, by the way, that's a, that's a reporter I kind of like, Masola Baba is a good guy. The, the reporter asked him that. The lone voice, and that's how they put it, you know, Joe FM and their things. The lone voice 
is saying that, I don't know why the reporter didn't mention the name of the loan, but because my relationship with Toby was going to mention my name, which is okay, which is fine. I like that. So the loan was 16%. Toby said it's not true, but it is true. Sorry to say, really sorry to say, it is true. I, I beg to differ. I beg, it is true, 16%. We have the record, the evidence. Any other journalist can get it. All of us can get it. It is true. He did not attend. He was unable to attend the meeting. So this is it. So this is an evidence of just one meeting. This is just one. But this is what we have. Okay. Uh, later tonight, we'll be talking about other things. We'll be talking about articles. Okay, so sh I don't know whether I, I, I want, if you want to talk about the money. I'm not so sure. So back to the money issue. So we return the money. Point we made, and in the interview, he talked about privileges and things like that. One of the other privileges was that council members, government facilitated for council members to get loans to buy cars, which Toby took advantage of. It is true that he has paid the loan. Almost every council member has paid the loan. How were they able to pay? They were paid from the allowances. So what is the what is the fact of the loan story? Government facilitated, as government does for members of parliament, as government does for other institutions. Government facilitated for council of state members to obtain loans to buy cars. Now, I'm making another point. Government then wrote off part of the loan as a matter of record. And when I say this now, don't joke with me. If you do, I'll bring it. But I just don't want to show it. We are dealing with a very important person. So government then wrote off part of the loan. I'm saying to you tonight that the amount of money that government wrote off the loan is bigger than the 365. It is. If you change it at today's rate, it's even way bigger. Not just that. Government said to Council of State members who want to take advantage of the facility that you can import the car, and when it comes to the port, you will get a waiver. You and I, do we get waiver from the port? We don't get waiver. I don't get waiver. You don't get waiver. If you bring a car, you have to pay for it. Council of State get, members get waiver. I am not against it. Council of State members deserve waiver. If we think they don't deserve waiver, amend the Constitution. End of story. Toby Afede took advantage of the waiver from the records at the Council of State. He did. So the cost of the waiver plus the, the, uh, the money that government wrote off it's bigger than 365. Perhaps, just perhaps, I may agree with Togbe Afede because in his letter, he sort of indicated that he had already received too much. So he didn't want this one. In the interview, he said the privileges are neither here nor there. Please, I beg to differ. They are here or there because they are the taxpayers' money. Those of you who shout on the high horse about taxpayers' money, this is taxpayers' money. Those of you who jump around to come and congratulate, Listen to the story. This is taxpayers' money. So if you say there's neither here nor there, what are you talking about? It is taxpayers' money. How is it neither here nor there? So you have to go through the privileges. Privileges without the government facilitated for us to obtain this. Government did it for us to obtain that. If he says that in view of all of these things, and given that for me it was an absolute part-time job, and that my schedule did not even allow me to attend so many meetings, I did not think that I deserve ex gratia. In the interview, he alluded to the fact that members of parliament can take ex gratia. So maybe to agree with him, the point he's making is that I had taken too much already. In fact, he made that point in his statement, that he had received salaries. The other day, yesterday, Dr. Bafu Ajimandria said that Council of State members ought not to receive salaries. Today, people are calling for the scrapping of the Council of State. That's the conversation we are engendering. Let us have that conversation. But let's deal with the truth and the facts. And let's stop this, etc. But let's deal with the truth and the facts. So he took advantage of all the perquisites that were available to Council of State members. And I'm saying it again. Toby Afede, as he himself said in the interview, took advantage of all the perquisites available to Council of State members. If for some reason he thinks that he doesn't deserve the extra money of the S. Gratia because of X, Y, Z, or because he held only one meeting when others were holding a lot more meetings, that's fair. That's fine. But it should not be presented as if he is a great saint and he's done something phenomenal and all of us here emulate. Emulate. That all of us should emulate. And no, that's not how we build a country. We are missing the point. That's the point I was making. We are missing the point if we are building a country like that. Because if you get into the real facts, if you get into the details, you will see that it's not as it looks. If you get into the details, it's not as it looks. So yes, and, and he said in the interview that he looked, saw the money and didn't know where it was coming from. Again, that also meant that his lawyers had not properly advised him on Article 71 and his relationship with the Council of State. 
Because if you become a Council of State member, you come on Article 71, you will receive salaries, you will receive emoluments, you will also receive S. Gratia. Now, we understand that some lawyers have different opinions about the S. Gratia, etc. We'll show that again today. Once we are done with it, we'll come to the position of Article 71. What does it mean? And then we'll explain it. Thank you.